Hello and welcome to this introduction into the IPS remote. My name is Thomas Rotenhäusler. I'm a technical sales manager at Jung for many years and I would like to introduce you this very interesting new application for our interface. Well, it's Corona time. Corona time means home office. We all know this situation. It's harder or less hard. It depends. But for integrator, I think it might be a hard job from time to time. Why? Because you are missing the contact to your customer and the contact to your projects. You need to upgrade something, you need to program something, the customer has new requirements, whatever, and you cannot come along. Therefore, the solution is a remote access, a remote maintenance option to do this via internet. This is now our new add-on package on our existing IPS interface where we have implemented this new feature. Of course, there are more options like a VPN tunnel, yes, but this is something which is quite complex and you need some well advanced hardware as well as advanced uh, network knowledge. Another alternative or well option that we can say would be port forwarding, but this is very, very unsecure and from our point of view not recommended at all. Especially nowadays where you can read so many bad things about hacking networks. So therefore, we would like to introduce you now this new feature in our interface. Of course, the interface uh, contains all the regular functions for an IP interface, what you normally use and know as an integrator, that's clear. But it also is compatible to the latest communication standard of KNX, means KNX secure. So that means it fulfills the KNX IP secure communication. Further on, we have also <coughs> some uh, benefits here. We have a display yeah, for maintenance. You can read all the network uh, data, all the network information, which is the network IP address and so on, a subnet. So we can read a lot of information on the display itself, which helps a lot in the maintenance uh, time. But this IP remote application or function is not just available with the new IPS. You can even already use the IPS 300 from the beginning from last year and you can upgrade those devices to get the IPS remote as well. It just has to be activated and that's it. The new versions up 0.5 contains this function straight away. Okay, so to get you to give you a better impression and understanding about this very smart and interesting uh, feature, I would like to show you now a short trailer about this product. Okay, the trailer gave you a short idea about the features and benefits of the IPS remote and now I would like to show you some more details in the catalog as well of course in the ETS. I have already installed the IP interface and established the bus connection. The IP network is already connected as well. What is missing is the IPS remote function. Okay, let's go and start with the Jung web page. As usual, I go via the online catalog to search for KNX, REG, and then system components. Here we find the IP devices, such as the IP interface, as well as the IPS remote license. Behind the info button of the IP interface, 
we find the update file. But this is only necessary for older versions, not for the new version 05. The new version has this function already on board, it just has to be activated. So really only for the older version you need this update file. Right. Then coming back to the IPS remote. This is an optional part for the IPS interface. Means that as long as you want to work just locally as usual, it is not necessary. Just when you want to use the remote access. Then you have to go here to get this added value or license for this device. So where to get this license? It can be found under My Jung. Of course, you need an account at Jung. If you miss this, please register for free at My Jung. Now just go to the section Software License Activation. Here two information are necessary. First, the device serial number and second, the last six digits on the device certificate of the corresponding IP interface. Both information you will find on the label of the device. So, after typing in this information here, I will show you this on a screenshot, and the activation from Jung, you will receive an activation code. This code is pretty long and it is strongly recommended to use the copy-paste function to avoid any mistake. Okay, now we can open the ETS project, which is already prepared. Here you find in my case a physical address 11100. Of course, this might be different in your project. We just have to adjust now some settings here. On the right, under properties and settings, the secure commissioning must be activated as well. Secure tunneling also must be activated and here the device certificate can be added as well. Just in case that is not yet done. In our case it is done, therefore it is not active anymore. How to get the certificates into the ETS project, it doesn't matter. The main thing is that the certificates are in somehow. So, type in the codes make really no sense, since it is a very long code and with tiny characters which will cause mistakes. The device certificate can be scanned via the webcam of your PC. Just show the label in front of the webcam and the ETS gets the device certificates into the project automatically. Since this might not be practicable, it is more comfortable to scan it with the Jung Secure Certificate Scanner app, which is available in the app stores and free of charge. Okay, last but not least, we have to fix something in the ETS settings. Here, especially a reasonable commissioning password is important and must be selected. Well, since this password is asked afterwards from time to time, it is necessary to get it no. Otherwise, you always have to check the password in a list which is uh, well quite time consuming and therefore not really recommended. Now, the important setting of the IP interface are done and as you have seen there are just some settings. Now the physical address as well as the application can be programmed as usual with the ETS. That's all for the standard IP interface application. In addition we have to program the added remote maintenance function. That means we have a second application which we have to download to the same device. If this is not yet available in your product catalog, that is no problem. We just go to the Jung webpage again, 
We select the IP interface and here under the info button you will find the latest database for the ETS file. Means download this file and import it into the ETS product catalog as usual. After that you can open this application and you can adjust the setting for the remote access. Now we have a closer look on the parameters for the remote maintenance. First, we have to add the activation code and as mentioned, the best way to do it is using the copy-paste function just to avoid the mistakes. So, you also find some more parameters here which you can check out by yourself. One, for instance, a very important one is to limit the remote access. In other words, the customer can allow the access from a certain time. An additional feature of the new application are the objects for the time and date, which can be used as system time and date, of course. This actually comes free of charge also without the remote license, so in a general application. Here we can see the communication objects, for instance, remote enabled, can be linked with a button in the visualization of the customer. With this function, the customer can turn on or off the remote access by himself, for instance, via a button in the visualization. The other objects are status objects to indicate various operations and are not that important for the main function of the remote access. So, this is so far. Finally, the last object might be used to show the customer that I'm actually programming something at the time. Okay, now to download the additional function, you must press the programming button twice. Now the interface will get the second physical address for the IPS remote function and further on the application is programmed as well. That's all for now and we can now see the actual situation of the interface on the group monitor which I just stop here. Here you see my interface but now the question is how to see this when I'm back home and want to reconnect my PC with the local project to change anything. Because this entry here won't be visible when I'm back home. Well, how to get now to the project of the customer? Quite simple. The solution is the Jung IPS remote app for the ETS 5, which is free of charge. Where to get this app? I will show you. I just have to go out of the project and here in the right corner you find the available apps for the ETS. The Jung remote app you will find here and can be installed via the green plus symbol. This file here has to be installed. That's all. The final question now is where to get this app? Very simple, just go to knx.org into your personal account. Under shop you will find all available ETS apps and of course also the Jung remote app. Here you can also search for it to save some time. And after this you get the app into your ETS and you can install it as I have already shown. Now you can see the apps in the ETS under apps and you might open the EP IPS remote app. With the button connection, we establish our remote connection. But, as you can see, we failed. Well, please check if the remote maintenance function is activated in the device. That means that we have to enable this function first. Well, I simulate this here by transmitting a telegram. You also see that there are some changes in the status objects down there. So now back to the app, 
you can see now I'm connected to the customer's project and I can use the interface IPS remote. To confirm this, I will stop the communication. You can see that I'm connected to the IPS remote. The other real interface won't be visible when the project is really remote. Well, now I select a tunnel and start the group monitor again. So, as you can see, I'm connected and communicate with the IPS remote. Now I could start working on the customer's project and could work on. So as a last test I will show you what happens when I or the customer turns off this function. For instance via a button in the visualization. So after a while it takes a certain time you can see that the green check here will turn to red. Okay, as I said, it takes a while because this is a live demo now and we have to wait for the real response. But after a certain timeout, it will be disconnected. And let's see, it should be yes, no, it is red and we are disconnected. Okay, now we have seen that this added function, this IPS remote, is a real true added value for both for the integrator as well as for the end user, especially when the end user can really control the access uh, to their home by themselves, which is, I think, a very important uh, fact. And I hope I could give you some very interesting information on that. And uh, I would like to say thank you and goodbye and of course stay safe.